Howdy folks. Tonight, we're going to take a journey into one of the most sinister corners of human history. Now, most of y'all probably heard about the twisted experiments that took place in Nazi Germany during World War II. But, what if I told you the stories we know ain't even the worst of it? What if some of those experiments went wrong? I'm talking about the experiments so horrifying they had to be buried deeper than any secrets you've ever heard of. In this story, we'll be uncovering something they never wanted anyone to find. Unimaginable horrors that backfired on the very monsters who created them. So buckle up, grab a light if you need it, and prepare yourself because tonight we're diving into the unspeakable horrors of Nazi experiments gone terribly, terribly wrong. Towards the end of World War II, a team of Soviet soldiers had discovered a secret underground Nazi lab. After detonating explosive charges, what awaited inside was a gruesome sight. A test lab utterly destroyed, mangled bodies, and after finding many important files, a journey towards the end of the lab, clutched in the hands of a scientist missing his left arm, eye, and appears to have shot himself. The journal was completely written in German and has since been roughly translated into many different languages. What lies in this journal is told here. August 12th, 1944, 9.24 a.m. Hello, I am Dr. Unschuldig Augsburg, and I am the head of the team in an experiment known as Operation Wolf Soldat. In Operation Wolf Soldat, we will be giving three subjects a hybrid version of the K9 parvovirus and parvovirus B19 called Wolfheit X1 in an attempt to create a new super chemical which will be used to create many allied soldiers. August 12, 1944, 5.09 p.m. I have just been given three dossiers containing the information on the subjects. Name. Borislav Kutsnov, subject A, gender, male, nationality, Soviet, ailments, none, reason of capture, POW, name, Denuda Brezhniki, subject B, gender, female, nationality, Polish, ailments, weak heart, reason of capture, Jew. Name. Adagoki Sowada. Subject C. Gender. Male. Nationality. African. Ailments. None. Reason of capture. For experimentation. It saddens me that I have to subject these souls to the torture of a superweapon, but I must keep my emotions away from me as I conduct these experiments. I have also been noted on the procedure of testing. 7 a.m. Give patient a glass of water infected with wolf height. 7 to 8 a.m. Watch for any symptoms. 8 a.m. Breakfast. 8.30 a.m. Medical examination. 9 a.m. Psych examination. 1 p.m. Lunch. 9 p.m. Dinner. 9.30 p.m. Medical examination, 10 p.m. Psych examination, 10.30 p.m. Lots up. This schedule continues, and over the course of time, we will be giving them larger doses of the wolf light. August 14th, 1944, 12.51 p.m. Two days have passed, and we have tested the three subjects, and they are fit for Operation Wolf Sodot. They will soon be placed into their cells which contains a cot to sleep on, and be ready for experimentation. August 15th, 1944, 10.18 a.m. After the dosage of wolf height, the patients have not been getting any symptoms at all, which is quite disappointing. Their medical and psych examinations have shown that nothing has changed within their bodies. We will continue observing, but if Operation Wolf Soldat is a failure, all the subjects will be executed. We have been told that under any circumstances, do not let Wolf Height X1 out of this laboratory. 
August 16, 1944, 4 p.m. Symptoms are now starting to show within the subjects, including constipation, fever, insomnia, sweating, and, strangest of all, blackouts. A medical examination has shown that the patient's agmagdala, or part of the brain which controls fear, and their hypothalamus, part of the brain that controls anger, has been altered into a very complicated pattern. Our team is looking into it now. August 17th, 1944, 8.42 a.m. Due to the newfound mutations of the hypothalamus and the amygdala, we have decided to add tests during the psych examination, which would most likely trigger a sense of fear or anger. However, we have taken precautions, and now every scientist directing the psych examinations are equipped with the Walter P-38 and body armor. August 17th, 1944, 9.31 a.m. Oh my God. Subject A was not deetered and no strange symptoms happened. However, subjects B and C experienced a strange phenomenon in which their irises shine to a bright gold and they gained extreme increase in their senses, along with strength and speed. This led to a doctor having to fire towards the subjects, but the bullets missed. However, this did not stop them from injuring the doctor. We decided to try the anger experiment on subject A and this led to the death of Dr. Zalo Garach. When we shut off the test, guards enter and found the doctor's body, his neck completely torn out, leaving blood sprayed against the walls. However, it seemed that Subject A was almost in a sleepwalking state and didn't realize what had happened once we shut off the test. It was decided that we shall keep Subject A alive, since it will greatly erode the amount of progress able to be done if we had one less subject. August 20th, 1944, 12.57 a.m. Fear and anger testing continues, even after the incident. The subjects have seemed to learn to control their flares, or what happens when they gain their supernatural abilities. This has left the team in debate, arguing whether we should give it to the Third Reich soldiers and make them extremely powerful, or destroying Wolfheit X-1 and executing the subjects before something terrible happens. I was on the first choice, but I'm now leaning towards the latter, as these people have turned into monsters. August 31st, 1944, 421 AM. Fuck. I knew I was right. For the past couple of days, everything has been normal. But now it seems the three subjects have escaped and are rampaging through the facility. As I awoke, I heard the sound of blood-curdling screams, the tearing of flesh, and the sound of gunfire. I was lucky enough to escape the carnage, but not without passing the ravaged bodies of scientists and guards alike. Ah, oh, shit. I think I see Subject B. I'll try to write once I escape him. August 31st. 1944, 5.02 a.m. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And I tried to escape that psychopathic fucking bitch, but she attacked me. And I lost my fucking left arm and my right eye. My God, it hurt so much. After the struggle, I escaped her. I locked myself in the emergency safe room. But I hear them trying to bust the damn door down. Well, they'll try to eat me, but not without a damn fight. Blood is splattered across the pages. After the Soviets found this journal, they had noticed that the emergency room window was broken, shattered with what appears to be footprints leading out into the forest. 